Welcome ladies and gentlemen, it's Pixelated All Follow. Thanks for stopping by. Hope you guys are doing well. And today we have another lore friendly siege battle in Third Age Total War. This of course is another custom scenario made by Paladin Bob. And we are at the great port city of Umbar. Just to give you a good idea of where this city is located, you can see it on this map right here. It is south of Gondor near the uh, Haradrim territory. And this is a very important city city because it's a very wealthy city it's a very, it's a very strategic location with a very strong port and at this time which is third age 933 gondor is doing a massive surprise invasion a beach landing to take out the city because as of right now in 933 third age it is under control by the Haradrim, the Black Numenorians, and the Corsairs. And the Corsairs, they have been using this location to continuously raid the the re the you know, the coastline of Gondor. So Gondor is just you know they've had enough. They're they're sick of it. They're gonna finally destroy this city or take you know take control of the city so they can no longer use it against them. And that is exactly what they do. This massive invasion. Uh, now historically speaking or lore speaking, they do take out the city in. In this battle right here I don't know what's gonna happen in this certain replay because this is a scenario it's not so much a historical reenactment so who knows what's gonna happen here but yes historically speaking Gondor takes the city and they hold it for 82 years after 82 years the Lords the black Numenorians who were in control of Umbar they raise a great army to retake this city and they siege Umbar for 35 years years a very long siege battle and the reason it takes so long is because of this great port right here gondor has a very strong navy at this point and they are they are able to ship in supplies and reinforcements to help out the uh, civilians and the the soldiers stationed here against that siege so they were never able to take it they just were not able 35 years wasted they could not take umbar but unfortunately umbar eventually falls and gondor loses loses control and it's not so much because of a external force it's an it's an internal force gondor goes through a very bloody civil war and I also, I also think a plague, and the city of Umbar becomes very weak, and eventually the, the Haradrim retake the city, and uh, that's just a little brief history of this great uh, city. Pretty cool stuff. So yes, we are witnessing the Third Age 933 invasion of Gondor. So it's going to be a bloody fight. Can't wait to get this one started. So let's go ahead and look at these army comps, and uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's start with Gondor here, commanded by Paladin Bob. He's got a very nice force, and notice here he's got a lot of the Pelig Peliger Marines. Uh, now, Peliger was the, I believe, I believe it's a city. It's where the Gondorian Navy is mostly located, so there's no surprise that they have a lot of Marines here. Also, we got some Athelian Rangers with the, uh, the King of Gondor right here leading this invasion. So yes, lots of Marines there. He also has more Marines over on this side, so a good, good force of Marines. And he also has a uh, an army that kind of landed in the inner port here. So uh, lots of axemen, uh, some swan knights. He has the guards of Osgiliath and some Gondor infantry spearmen. So a pretty solid force. He's got a ballista as well. He's going to need a lot of these uh, soldiers because this is going to be a very bloody showdown. And then on the other side, you can see there is also another beach landing. So they're attacking on many different fronts. This army is commanded by Magyar Hoplita. He is bringing some Gondor infantry. Of course, he's got some Marines. He's got the Trebuchet. He's got some militia. More Swan Knights. These guys are very tough, very tough to kill. He's got more Gondor infantry, some spearmen, and uh, that's pretty much it. Very nice Gondor army from from this player. Here's some Blackroot Vale archers, some axemen, and then moving on to the final attacking army, which is commanded by Stevo 3. He's bringing a catapult, lots of siege equipment. He also got some dwarven mercenaries joining him in this siege, I guess for the riches, I don't know. Uh, axemen of Erebor here. He's got uh, some freemen, so he's got actually a lot of mercenaries in this army. Some heavy axemen, some spears, guards of Osgiliath, swan knights, and he even has some Eldar soldiers. So he's got some Eldar archers, two units of Eldar archers and he's got a decent amount of caps so we got the general's bodyguard mounted swan knights 
And we have, oh, look at this. We got uh, Rohan, who's also present in today's little tussle. So that's pretty cool. So those are the attackers. Let's move on to the the defenders and I think there's two two defenders here one defending the main city of Umbar and then one army defending the port of Umbar so we'll start with the uh, army that's defending the port which is commanded by Jokadale he's got a lot of uh, Southron archers he's re really he's got a lot of Haradrum infantry the serpent guard he's got the trollmen of Harad and he's got, you know, it's troops just kind of scattered everywhere. This is like a small scouting, like, light defense over here. They quickly assembled to take on this surprise ev invasion. He's got the South Round Pikemen, some Corsairs uh, defending these uh, strategic choke points. He's also got uh, some more troops over on this side, Corsairs and uh, Corsair Archers. He also has some Muhad Tribesmen over here, a nice Javi unit. They're going to do a lot of damage against those Marines. And he's got some Corsairs located here. And then we'll move on to the defending army that's defending the city here, which is commanded by Son of Imladris. Very, very similar army. He's got Corsairs. He's got a lot of great infantry. Over in the center, he's bringing the Black Numenorians. So here they are, the very elite lords that govern this city. He's got some Haradrum archers, some tribesmen, nice Javi unit, more Black Numenorians. And actually, one of the nine are govern... Are well, one of the nine are in control of the th in defense. He's the leader here at Umbar, so he's right here on horseback with his Black Numenorean um, bodyguard. And that's pretty much it for the forces. So let's go ahead, guys, get this battle started. I believe it starts right over here. All right, guys, so here we go. Here's the start of the battle. I don't know what was going on at the beginning. You can see that the, uh, the Marines took about 20 casualties here. The players were just kind of standing around, not really doing anything. I don't know if they had some kind of truce or something, but finally the battle has begun. The Muad tribesmen moving into position, getting ready to spray down their Javi, uh, Javis on the enemy forces. Paladin Bob now moving up his Marines. He's going to stop right here and get a good volley. Now, I do want to let you know that I turned down the graphics for this battle. This battle seems to be crashing a lot, and it might be because it's just... The graphics are too much for it, along with my recording software. So hopefully this battle doesn't crash and I can a actually upload this one. This this battle is actually pretty old. Uh, Paladin Bob made an Umbar version before this one that had Mumakill that would show up as reinforcements. But I guess, he, I, I don't know, it just it kept crashing. So now we're trying again without the Mumakill. So hopefully this one works. Anyways, moving on to this battle, you can see the Marines are now taking on the Corsairs. Shouldn't be too challenging of a task. They should be able to take them out pretty quickly, but they are going to put up a decent fight. And the tribesmen, they're going to still continue to fire down their Javis. And if we look over on the other side, you can see the same thing is happening here. The Marines taking on the Corsairs. The archers firing down a lot of arrows here. And it, we're going to it's going to get pretty laggy at times because this battle is so massive. Oh my god, it's getting extremely laggy. Holy crap. All right, so let's zoom out of here. God, they're losing a lot of Marines here to the enemy archers. So uh, the Corsair is doing an excellent job of holding. But if we look over on the other side, this wall defense, the great Gondor army is moving, and they've got to move quickly. He's using his artillery to take out the siege towers, and uh, now these, or I'm sorry, the arrow towers. But now the siege towers are in position. The Gondor infantry storming up. They're going to take the walls. Uh, they've lost a lot of good men here, but it's very, very wise of him to use his militia first because militia lives don't matter as much as, uh, like, swan knights. You know, you don't want to lose the swan knights from enemy, uh, enemy skirmishers. You want to use, you want to lose them in melee. Uh, but yeah, more forces storm in the wall over here. This is insanely laggy. I'm so sorry, guys. It's just a massive battle. Can't do much. Can't do much about that. I mean, I'm just hoping this replay doesn't crash. Fingers crossed. We've never made it this far, so we'll see what happens. Uh, but the Gondor infantry just slicing and dicing their way through this uh, this defense here, and we see the elves are now putting down some su suppressing fire on the war band. So this battle over on this side is really underway. And I think Gondor, if they can just keep pushing more troops to this wall, they should be able to easily take this wall. They're getting more and more... There we go. Now, now the Gondorian militia, they're going to storm and silence these javelins. They're going to they're gonna get one more volley there. And there they go, popping down. <laughs> it's pretty goofy looking, but, you know, whatever. It's a, it's a game that's 10 years old. 
So Gondor having a pretty good stronghold there. For a second, I thought the game crashed, but no, it's a cutscene. And the, the gate has been destroyed. You can see more and more infantry storming into the siege towers. This battle is, I mean, this is just ginormous battle. That is why it is so laggy. My goodness. All right, more, more militia going up on the walls. And I think they're going to be storming through the gate here pretty soon. Or no, they just kind of left it open. Very interesting there. Let's go ahead and zoom back over to this way or fly back over this way. You can see Gondor is pushing in the inner part of the port. This is the, uh, the part of the army that was uh, very aggressive and did a beach landing deep inside the port. So they're going to march over this way. And uh, I think the fight is going to continue on over here. You can see the Corsairs are running low. Pretty soon this defense is going to fall. But I don't think this is a defense that they were really planning on uh, holding for very long. So they're just going to hold back these Marines. Try to kill as many Marines as possible before they advance deeper into the city. And uh, this actually, this side is actually holding pretty well. I mean, these archers, the Corsair archers, are doing an excellent job. I see a lot of dead Marines over here. But they are they are also running low on Corsairs here. Let's see. And they're actually, yeah, they're running low on troops here. They might actually be able to hold against this Marine invasion here. But of course, they're not going to hold against this massive force on this side. So Paladin Bob really pushing his army over here. He's going to take the streets. As the civilians are screaming in horror as the Gondorian infantry just storm through the streets of... Umbar. <laughs> and we do have a small garrison force in here. We got some Hashari, some Southron Warband, Warband, and some Muhan tribesmen ready to defend these bridges. Let's see what uh, Jokadale does over here with his forces. I think he's just going to hold the bridges. Or he might just wait for Gondor to storm up the street. This is going to be a very challenging position for Gondor to take to eventually move up to the main city and support the other Gondorian armies. So let's move on to the walls here. Let's see what's going on. So Gondor infantry stor still st storming the walls. I can finally the frame rate is getting better. It seems like a couple troops died, so they're gonna be you know it's gonna be less less framing, less troops to to worry about on the battlefield. But he's using his marines here very wisely. He's throwing his javelin, and uh, the forces of Harad they are falling back. They are falling back. They're leaving this gate wide open. But they're holding pretty well over here. The Marines, or I'm sorry, the militia here, they are, they're not doing so great. I mean, the tribesmen were able to hold their ground. They've got to take care of this unit, but they're exhausted. They're winded. They're shaken. They could break at any second now. And then moving over to the other side, you can see that Gondor is actually having a lot of success over here. They've surrounded these tribesmen. So son of Imladris, this part of his defense is starting to crumble. The Gondor infantry storming on through. And uh, they are eager to destroy the defenses. So a pretty solid defense. I mean, it's pretty tough to take out such a massive force on this side. And they're still doing an excellent job over here. I mean, look at all of these uh, South Ra South Ron Warband. Uh, they're going to hold for a pretty long time. Here comes the... Here we go. Here comes the charge through the gate. We have Gondor infantry taking on the Southron warband. So Gondor seeking revenge for all of the uh, the poor civilians that were slaughtered, murdered in those raids from the Corsairs. They're here to uh, get revenge and take the city. Destroy the hopes and dreams of the Corsairs. I see a lot of arrows flying down over here. You can see he's got some archers back in the streets just trying to give some suppressing fire some supported or some support fire uh, down with the infantry there trying to cut down the Gondorian infantry they're gonna try to hold for as long as possible but I don't think they're gonna hold for that long because of the Marines flanking around this uh, this position here so I think they were able to get up on this wall go down the stairway and attack the flank but Gondor finally making a dent into this defense and yes they are going to be able to cut down the uh, Haradrim infantry and take this wall and we can see the the brave faces of Gondor still getting hit hard from the archer fire but it's that, you know that's not that's not the hardest task of this defense the hardest task is going to be taking this position right here this is going to be very challenging you can see they've got a lot of defenses they've got these inner walls here that 
have archers on them. They're going to be able to cut down a lot of the uh, Gondorian soldiers, so we'll see what happens. Let's move back over to the, uh, the port battle, where Gondor is regrouping their forces. Uh, it doesn't look like there's any fighting going on in the center here yet. Let's move on to those strate strategic choke points where, uh, oh, yep, the Marines have, they were able to push through that Corsair infantry defense, and now they are attacking the Corsair archers. So the Marines doing a lot of damage here. So finally breaking through those, uh, those strategic choke points. And uh, we can see the Marines on this side. Let's see, where are they? Oh, here they go. They're marching towards the center. They are victorious as well, able to cut down that light Corsair defense. And they're going to be moving on to the, the troops who are holding the center position. But you can see some Muad tribesmen moving up here. So they're not going to give up the port just yet because obviously the, the port is very, very important. The, <laughs> see, port important? Anyways. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> but the Muad tribesmen moving up here. They're going to get up on this slight ridge, I assume. They're going to be the first to try to put down some suppressing fire. Try to get a couple kills before they charge in. Let's see. Well, they have their maces out. They don't have the... Let's see. Hold. No. Are they out of ammo? I assume so. So they're going to charge in here. Take on the Marines. At the great city of Umbar. Fighting for their people. Fighting for the Black Numenorians. And fighting for one of the nine. More infantry storming on this way. He's leaving this undefended, so Paladin and Bob, he's now going to push in some spearmen across the bridge here. So they're going to try to take the bridge. You can see the, the city in the background. And they're going to push and take out the defenses, whatever whatever is left in the center position. You can see he's holding up on this hill, the uh, Muhad tribesman, Jokadel. He's gonna, he knows these troops are going to die. There's no way they're going to make it out of this alive. So he's going to try to take out as many as possible. Oh wait, hold hold that thought guys. What do we have here? Okay. I completely missed this force. Jokadale has a pretty large cav reinforcement force. Uh, I believe this represents the Mumakil. Well, actually we've got the, uh, is this the general? No, it's just some black Numenorians. Not the Nazgul. Uh, so they're pushing over their cav. They're looking for more opportunities, and they definitely need to try to, to try to get some good cycle charges and cut down the Gondorian infantry, because they have a lot of infantry left. And you can see Gondor is getting ready for this uh, reinforcement force. The general's bodyguard, you know, screaming out commands. The archers standing their ground, just checking their bows, make sure they're ready to go. We'll see what happens. I'll keep my eye out on that mini-map there once they get a little bit closer. Let's head back over to these main fights here where Gondor is pushing against the uh, Muhad tribesmen. You can see the tribesmen actually were able to get a decent amount of kills. Look at that. That is a lot of fallen brave Gondorian infantry there. The infantry pushing, trying to take out these tribesmen. It's going to be a challenging task. We can see another Gondor infantry taking on the Southron Warband. And now the Marines are pushing to take on the Hashari. The Muhad tribesmen that were originally fighting the Marines were cut down. The Hashari now are showing up as reinforcements to try to slow down this Marine flank. Oh, nice. Nice volley there from the Javelins of the Marines. And uh, you can see Jokadale over on this side... He's preparing his final stand at the port. You can see he's got archers on the cliffs here. He's got infantry, serpent guard, trollmen of Harad. These guys are really tough. And he's got a lot of archers and pikemen holding strategic choke points. That's going to make it very challenging for Gondor. They might even... They, they have the ability to destroy Gondor. And you can see the general who's controlling the port defense is watching over the battlefield on this platform. Which is pretty cool. Let's move on over here where the cav is charging in. You can see Harad's reinforcements moving in. Gondor trying to form a bit of a new box. Trying to protect his archers. Let's see what happens here. Uh, let's see. These archers. Yes. Haradrim Raiders. Getting some good shots there. So they need to get some good cav charges. Let's see. Here we go. Here we go. The Black Numenorians going in. Oh, they take out some of the, the guards of Osgiliath. 
They're now attacking the Swan Knights, but it looks like they're going to be surrounded by Swan Knights, mounted and dismounted. And the Black Numenorians are going to be cut down by the very elite Swan Knights. And uh, let's see, the Corsair Raiders here firing down on that position. We've got uh, the Rohirrim, the Horse Archers firing back, trying to zone out those enemy Horse Archers. So we got a bloody skirmish going on out of here. I don't know if these reinforcements are going to be enough. But uh, yeah, I definitely turned down the shadows to low. And I think that's really helping this replay. So it's not crashing. It's not too much for the game. So I'm gonna, I have a lot of replays, a lot of custom scenarios that have been crashing because they're just so massive. So I might go back and just lower the graphics a little bit and try to get them working. Not sure if this is a perfect solution. Who knows? I just fingers crossed that this game does not does not crash because we're so we're already so far into this battle. It would suck that uh, this would all be lost. But uh, anyways, moving back to this fight, the uh, the horse archers still putting down a lot of uh, firepower, and it's a little bit of a tussle here. But it seems like the Haradrim raiders are focused on Gondor's infantry. You can see some dwarven iron guard moving in. I didn't see all this iron guard. Uh, there's actually a lot of dwarves here. I thought it was just the axemen of Erebor. Uh, but no, the Iron Guard trying to zone out the enemy cav. And now the Gondor's general moving in. Going to try to cut down these archers before they can escape. And they, they do exactly that. So the battle over here for the outer walls of Umbar is about to end. You can see Gondor is now just resting up their troops, preparing for the next wave here. I think there are some... There, there's some fighting going on here. So the Haradrim archers getting cut down by some marines, but it looks like we got some axemen reinforcements. They're gonna they're gonna e easily turn this this battle around. This small engagement here. So yes, Gondor has taken the the great walls of Umbar, and they will continue to push to the town center, which this is their final hope right here. And you can see they've they've grouped up most of their forces. So it's gonna be a bloody conclusion to this fight. And uh, the same thing over here. I mean, they've really grouped up their forces. Actually, I see. Let's see. Where did his Serpent Guard go? Is he falling back? Looks like he is falling back the Serpent Guard. So he might be going back to uh, more more levels over here, more platforms to uh, get ready to defend. Not really sure, but we got um, catapults positioned in strategic locations. Uh, we'll see how effective that is. Uh, let's see. Gondor just resting up his troops. Like the other Gondorian army on the other side. Wow, this battle is still going on. The Muhad tribesmen, man. They put it they put up an excellent fight and they definitely took out a lot of enemy forces. They had to throw in the Swan Knights to aid them in this in this struggle. And uh, wow. Were they victorious over here? Actually, no, no, the Ashari, they're getting cut down, but they took out a lot of forces. Most of the Marines are already dead in this battle, so their sacrifice hopefully will not go in vain. And uh, the Athelian Rangers moving in. They're going to try to surround the uh, Muad tribesmen and the South, uh, South Ron Warband here, taking on a decently uh, decent sized amount of Gondor infantry. And uh, this is pretty much it for the tribesmen up, up here. There's about two men left. So we're getting a little framey over here. Sorry about that, guys. Better than crashing. There's that flanking charge by the king. The king of Gondor. All right, so that's going to be it for the, uh, the outer defense of this port. And really, it's going to come down to this this defense right here. My goodness. Sorry about this, guys. Uh, you can see that he is retreating his forces back inside the city. He realizes that he needs to put more men in, in the city. And the walls are now crumbling over here. Where is this? Why is this necessary? Let's see. Where is that happening? Uh, does, it just doesn't seem necessary to knock down the walls. Maybe he's trying to get the artillery inside the walls. He can't get it through the gate. Maybe that's it. I don't know. Maybe the trebuchet or something like that. Yeah, I think that's it. So they're going to be able to walk in here, put in all their forces, and begin the the, uh, the next assault of the town center of Umbar. So just like that, the brave Haradrim 
lose this outer wall. I mean, I didn't really expect them to hold for that long because of just how elite this Gondor army is. But I think they did a pretty, pretty good job taking out a decent amount of their forces. And like I said earlier, it's all going to come down to this right here. And I think that's why Jokadel is retreating some of his forces because he needs to help out his other teammate defend that town center because if they lose that town center, it's game over. Now this defense is becoming lighter and lighter. It's going to be a lot easier for Paladin Bob to break through that. And he's pushing up his ballista here. And uh, I think the fighting over here has finally ended. And they can now focus all of their attention to this main defense. And you can see he's pushing up some uh, ballista here. So we are at a bit of a, a slow point in the battle. So we're gonna we're gonna fast forward a little bit here. All right, guys, welcome back. So I made a small cut there. It didn't miss much. Just a lot of skirmishing and troop movement. You can see that Gondor Paladin Bob. He pushed up some of his archers. It's been a pretty long skirmish, not super long. He lost a lot of cas or took a lot of casualties here. Uh, just trying to spray down, weaken this uh, this defense over here. But we do have some infantry charging into the Marines that are being pushed forward. I think he's hoping to get some... Well, maybe not. I think he was trying to get some javelin throws there, but I think he's out of ammo. So maybe uh, maybe not there. But yeah, they're, they're, they have begun the, uh, the main attack here, main assault on this uh, back part of the port defense. And there's really not a ton of troops defending this, this road right here. So I think Gondor is going to be able to take this pretty quickly. Now he's got some Marines back here in reserve. See, does it, do they have anything to throw? No, I think they're out of ammo as well. So they're going to push up and support their other Marines here. And the archers on top of this hill, they're getting a ton of kills. Really good position for these Corsair archers. I'm not sure how much ammo they have left over. Let's see, what are they focusing down? I think they're, they're trying to take out some Citadel Guard here, which is a very expensive target. Oh, they're going for the General. Paladin Bob, get your General out of there. He's getting evaporated right now. So he needs to fall back. He needs to do something to save his general. Also, we have a ballista back over here. Uh, if we zoom over this way, you can see there's some enemy... Uh, or not enemy, defending cav here. Southron Lancers uh, looking for more opportunities to charge the back of the enemy forces. And uh, Gondor is now pushing up their main army through the streets of Umbar. Getting ready, getting ready to uh, siege the final defense. The inner town center of Umbar. Uh, I think they're they're setting up some archers though to try to spray down on those those lancers, uh, but the lancers are going to be able to move out of there pretty quickly and get behind the enemy forces. But they lost a look at this. They lost a lot of good men over here. Got more cav over here. What is going on? It's like they're stuck or something. Uh, but the the archers very wisely went up on the hill. Got, they got some nice shots on the uh, enemy cav. Uh, so nothing too crazy going on on this side. Just a lot of troop movement. They're just getting ready to uh, push towards the town center. All right, let's head back over this way. But you can see we got some Southron pikemen now joining the front line. Just buying time for those Corsair archers so they can try to rack up as many kills as possible. The ballista is now firing, sniping out these Corsair archers. Here comes another shot right here. Oh. Falls short there. Does not get any kills. Paladin, Paladin Bob really trying to take out this pike defense here. Pretty solid defense. See what is he? He's got some Citadel Guard and Reserve ready to uh, join the fight as soon as those Marines start to waver. And if you look on the minimap, the main castle of Umbar, you can see Gondor really flanking around their troops, getting ready to surround the uh, the town center. So yeah, let's see that infantry there. Yeah, he's got some Gondor spearmen. A lot of spearmen over here. I think they're going to get ready to attack this side. All they have to do is walk down the street here, attack this front. And really, at, at taking this town center, it's going to it's going to be about attacking on multiple fronts at the same time. So it's all going to be about timing, overwhelming the defending forces, and we'll see if they can pull it off. They might be waiting for Paladin Bob 
to uh, support him in this assault. So we're going to head back over to Pallet and Bob's struggle because that's where most of the action is taking place right here. A lot of arrows coming down. Still a lot of arrows from this Corsair archers. I think it's a, it's really a matter of time until these South Run pikemen get killed here. They're doing a pretty good job though. They're definitely slowing down this Gondor invasion and buying more time for these archers. Oh, the Ballista of Justice. See if he gets another hit. I mean, it's almost a hit every single shot, except for that one and the one before. This has been a pretty slow grind right here. The Gondor Spearmen now joining the front line, pushing forward in tight formation, trying to block some of those arrows. They're down to 75 men. There they go, they're charging in, joining that front line, trying to overwhelm the enemy. Oh, we got some Marines over here who have some Javelin... No, they don't. Yeah, it looks like the Marines used up most of their Javelin ammo. Small units of Marines joining over here. These guys have seen a lot of action. And if we look back on the minimap, you can see that Cav. I think they're looking for an opportunity to storm the back over here of Gondor. Gondor has a couple units just kind of watching, seeing what that one Cav unit is doing. Uh, but I don't think they're really going to be able to accomplish much here with this single unit of Lancers. If he can hold them back until the very late game, they could be a, a game changer. But if he uses them prematurely and charges charges in and just gets wiped out, it will be for nothing. So we'll see what happens uh, over there later on in the battle. But yeah, Gondor just kind of taking their time. Letting Pallet and Bob uh, push forward, letting him get through the defenses. They might want to send some troops over to uh, support him. I mean, if they can help take out this gate, that would be huge because these guys defending the gate, they're going to do a lot of uh, they're going to do a lot of damage. So I think Gondor should definitely head over, you know, some troops over on that side, support Paladin Bob, and that would make his uh, his assault here a lot easier. But you can see all the catapults have been retreated, so he's not he's not going to be using the catapults. Amazing. So this defense has become extremely light, and even the archers have fallen back, or that, or they, I think they, char yeah, they charged in, they used up all their ammo. So this is it, right here. This small force is defending the port. Now we just wait for the, the other Gondor army to make their move. I'm keeping my eye out on that mini-map just in case they move in for the town center. The balance of power is looking pretty good for Gondor. They've killed 62% of the defenders and only 43% of the attackers have been killed. That could change very quickly though because most of the troops that they've killed so far are the, uh, the lesser troops. Once they push towards that town center and they've got the catapult support and all that elite infantry, this game can turn very quickly. So they're going to hold out for a pretty long time. That, that grindy battle is going to last for a decent amount of time. Uh, the Corsairs are now falling back. They're, they're going to leave the gate open. They're leaving the gate open and they're going to rely on the town center. And that's probably a smart idea because they can get outflanked by the other Gondorian army there. So Gondor, all they need to do is send one unit over. Just send them over and support them in this, this fight over here. I don't know. It's tough to say because by the time Gondor sends over some troops, it might be, you know, this fight might be over. So we are finally halfway through the the battle, <laughs> which is pretty insane. This is going to be a long battle, guys.
All right, so Pallet and Bob just holding back here. He's got some Marines. I mean, he still has a decent amount of forces. Yeah, he's got a lot of forces over here. They're just kind of stationed here. Uh, he should definitely try to regroup them. He's actually lost a lot of troops, which is quite surprising. I mean, I thought he had a lot more, but it seems like he's down to a handful of troops. I mean, it's going to be enough to break through this defense, but he's not going to be that much help. He's not going to have that many troops to support his ally in taking this town center where they are regrouping. And Gondor, here we go. Gondor is already pushing in. You can see the Swan Knights making a move here. So this is very exciting. Finally, we're having another fight on multiple fronts. So the Swan Knights trying to push their way through the great city of Umbar. Attacking these Black Numenorians. And you can see he's got some reserves in the back here. Some archers trying to spray down some arrows. Taking on the, uh, the Haradrim archers who have a very, very good angle to enemy forces. Also, we have a catapult that's loaded up, ready to go. Let's see if he fires here. Oh, he, he, he has been firing. I think he's going for the, uh, the enemy catapult. Or the attacking catapult, I should say. Uh, this catapult is also firing. Trying to... I think we got a bit of a catapult war going on here. They're just trying to take out each other's catapults. Let's see if uh, Gondor can get lucky here and try to take out the uh, Haradrim catapult. There we go. The first, first shot here. Let's... Oh, my goodness. That is a risky angle right there. I think he, he's, he's hit... I think he's got a couple friendly fire hits there on his Swan Knights. Alright, I think they're pushing over on this side as well. So the great push from the Swan Knights to take out this position. And you can see the percentages killed are slowly getting closer and closer as Gondor takes on this heavily defended location. Look at this lone Swan Knight able to sneak his way around. He's gonna he's gonna creep up on a black Numenor. Let's see if he can kill him. Come on, dude. Remember you're trading. You're you've been trading for this your whole life. Oh, he got hit by an arrow. Oh no, the black Numenor black Numenorian able to turn around, take on the Swan Knight. We got an epic duel going on. Oh, he, he takes an arrow to the face, to the head, but he's still going strong. Uh oh, uh oh, he might be being double teamed here. Come on, come on. Remember you're training your whole life. It's, you've been training for a moment like this for your whole life. Come on, come on, you can do this. Just an epic struggle between very, very skilled warriors. You are a Swan Knight. I don't care if you're taking on a Black Numenorian. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, they're ganging up on him. Uh-oh. Oh, no. He's gonna... Oh, he got a hit from the back. Oh, no. He's dead. And that's decapitation. That, uh, that's the end of the road for that Swan Knight. But the rest of his uh, regiment continues to push on. And the archers are now using fire arrows to try to light these suckers on fire. So let's see if they can do that. And the Swan Knights actually, they, did they break or did he fall back there? I think, uh, I think they actually held their ground against that Swan Knight. So we got another regiment of Swan Knights. Those Black, New Black Numenorians, are, they've got to be like, uh, another unit of Swan Knights? What are we supposed to do? There we go. They do a counter charge there. Excellent. Nice aggressive play by the defenders. Son of Enladris using those Black Numenorians very aggressively. Fantastic. So this is the epic conclusion of the Siege of Umbar. Uh-oh. Gondor infantry breaking. They're freaking out. They're getting cut down by the Black Numenorians. Fire arrows coming in. Trying to light these catapults on fire. They're using standard shot. Trying to get more accurate of shots. We can see the Black Red Veil archers. Gondor infantry and even Eldar archers are all putting down suppressing fire. But they are having a tough time. Because of the poor positioning, they have a terrible angle, angle, and the defenders have an excellent angle. Oh, we got a lone Gondor infantry. Oh, he's breaking. I thought he was going to be a hero. <laughs> nope. Come on, dude. Kill a Black, Numen Black Numenor. You're behind him. Nope. You'd rather just freak out and die. There you go. That's unfortunate. Now the Swan Knights are breaking, and that main assault has failed. Uh, he's going to have to push up more infantry, which he certainly does have more infantry. He's pushing up some freemen. They're going to be the next to take this uh, strategic point. And you can see all the archers up here. Look at that. A lot of archers up here. Haradrim archers defending their home against the Gondor 
tyrant invaders. Not really. I mean, you gotta you gotta kind of feel for Gondor because they're defending against these raids. So it's not like a senseless uh, power grab over here, you know. Uh, we got a lot of infantry located. Oh, oh, good, good hit on the dismounted serpent guard. I don't think he meant to uh, hit that unit. I think he was going for the enemy artillery, but uh, you know, sometimes that happens. Sometimes you get a good hit there. Uh, but the archers are taking a lot of arrows. So hopefully the defenders run out of ar arrows very soon because they will certainly need that. Let's look at what's going on over on this side. I think uh, Paladin Bob was able to finally push through this choke. Yes, he has. He's finally able to break through. He's got his ladders ready to go, his swan knights. Oh, well, you know, his army's not that, that weak. The swan knights are going to be very helpful. He's got more marines down here. He's got more troops with ladders coming forward. So he's, he's got a decent amount of troops. I, I think he's, he's still going to be able to be very helpful in the, the rest of the siege battle. Uh, but I think he's keeping... I uh, see Jokadel, he's keeping his troops in the streets here because he doesn't want to clump up too many forces and get hit by artillery. I think that's very wise from Jokadel. I don't know if he's doing that on purpose or what, but it's, a, it's smart either way. It's going to be good for the defenders either way. But another epic struggle. Swan Knights against Black Numenorians. The artillery repositioning here. Corsairs. Oh, oh! This catapult nearly got hit. Amazing. I thought it did get hit. But you can see the uh, the Nazgul over here hiding in the corner. Got an, oh, you got a nice fountain up here. That's nice. That's lovely. It's not such a bad place. Uh, but you can see a lot of archers are dead here. I mean, they took a beating. And they're just kind of letting the artillery do all that, the heavy lifting now. The, see the infantry, they're in shield wall formation. Just kind of holding back here. Before they engage the enemy. And the swan knights. I don't know. Defeat seems, defeat is a distinct possibility. And victory seems certain for the black Numenorians. A very tough, tough unit to take on. And I don't see any more, well they, they've got more infantry over here. But it's not a lot. Oh, here we go. Here's some dwarves. You definitely need to send up the dwarves, man. They're excellent at taking out enemy infantry. So they still have a lot of infantry over here. They can still push through. It's not looking that bad. And it looks like he's pushing up the catapult crew. So they're actually the enemy is actually wasting their ammo on the catapult crew and Gondor archers. That's actually really good from Gondor there. Good way to, to make the enemy waste their ammo. There they go, loading up, ready to fire. Firing down in that position. A lot of reserves over here. It's going to be very challenging. I think the defenders, let's see. The percentage kills, uh, still pretty... It's looking still pretty good for the, the attackers. 71% for defenders, 55% for the attackers. But things are kind of slowing down here. They're, stu they're, they're going to stop pushing in infantry. They're going to use up their archer ammo, use up their artillery ammo. And now Gondor is pushing to the the other side of the wall, getting ready to uh, siege siege this wall, put ladders up here, and get infantry across. All he really needs is one ladder. Just put put up one ladder. He can take control of the gate, and then he can open up the gate and get more troops inside. Okay, so uh, I think uh, yep, the Swan Knights have been destroyed. And we'll go ahead and fast forward a little bit here. Just wait for the next big advance on the town center. Alright guys, welcome back. So the battle has finally picked up once again. I cut out a pretty large chunk of the battle because there's just a lot of troops moving around. A little bit of skirmishing and catapult fire. We didn't really miss much. So it looks like the Corsair is actually being aggressive here. Taking on the Freeman. And you can see there's a lot of cannonballs. They're not cannonballs. Fiery balls of justice from both sides firing down. And uh, the archers have now moved up another unit of Eldar archers. Or, or I'm sorry, the elves. Or the, Well, really, it's Gondor. But whatever. Uh, Gondor now pushing up. This is Paladin, Paladin Bob now moving in on what's left of the defenses in the streets here. So finally, Paladin Bob able to push his army in and uh, do somewhat damage to this, this flank here. I definitely think he should wait a little bit. And let his ally push in a little bit harder here because he has more troops. 
So we'll see what happens. It doesn't look like... I mean, this is pretty much it for the infantry as of right now. The Freemen taking on the Corsairs. And a lot of archer fire. Oh, and we got, we got the artillery coming in. Getting really close to killing some troops there. Archer still putting down a lot of suppressing fire. Come on, catapults. Come on, load up. Load up. Look at this one elf. He's in between the catapults. Getting, oh, getting in the way of the catapult crew doing their job. Freeman. Now we got some uh, Gondor infantry joining this fight. And I think it's time for these, uh, the, the reserves in the streets over here. It's time for them to fall back. I think they need to get inside the town center because they don't want to lose their foothold in the town center. You don't want the dwarves to, just to storm in and take out so many, uh, so many troops in the town center. Let's see, he is pushing up his, uh, his axemen here. So, yeah, what I was saying is you don't want the dwarves to just come in and capture. Like, you see how there's nothing really defending here? If they storm in and then the attacker or the defenders try to counterattack that assault, it's going to be too late. So I think he needs to fall back a lot of these forces back inside here. Form like a V-shape here and defend against those dwarves because they are going to be a tough bunch to kill. Oh, we got we got more infantry, I think. More Corsairs joining the fight. The elves are now taking out their blades. Oh, we got a good artillery shot there. Taking out a good amount of those Corsairs. A lot of arrows just flying all over the place. Pretty nasty struggle over there. And then, of course, Paladin and Bob with his forces trying to get through the Trollmen of Harad. Nice street battle right here. This looks really cool. Oh, and the Javelins coming in and wiping out Paladin and Bob's army. That, that is excellent. So we are down to the last, like, 15 minutes of this battle or so. Trollmen of Harad. They're standing their ground. So this is going to be a very tricky fight. They are just praying that the uh, the tribesmen here run out of ammo, which it looks like they have. They've used up all their ammo. We see some troops moving around this way. That is because Gondor. We've got Magyar Hoplita pushing over some infantry. They're going to stand their ground. The Serpent Guard are actually going to charge in and engage the Gondor forces. There they go. So a nice fight over there. That's going to be a tough fight against those Serpent Guard. Here comes the Dwarves. The Dwarves are now taking on the Black Numenorians. The Swan Knights just didn't have enough to take them out. And uh, this is going to be another bloody fight between some very elite forces. And these Black Numenorians, they're just taking elite force after elite force after elite force out. And the Corsairs, man. It just seems like they're multiplying over here. They're just getting bigger and bigger. The balance of power. Look at this. The, the, the percentage killed is getting closer and closer. 63% for the attackers and 75 for the defenders. So the defenders are turning this one around. Do they have enough? Do they have enough troops to save the day and to hold, all, hold on to Umbar and change history? We'll find out soon enough. See the general just staying behind uh, the walls here. And, oh, let's see. The It looks like Gondor. I don't know. This is a pretty close struggle here. Paladin Bob, he's trying to slowly cut down these trollmen of Harad, but it's taken quite a while. Where's all that infantry? Where did they all go? I'm not sure. I mean, the Serpent Guard are taking on this Gondor uh, spear infantry here. Like we saw earlier. But where's the rest of his infantry? I guess he uh, retreated them back to the town center. I don't know. I don't know. This is going to be pretty tough. I mean, these Black Numenorians, they're really, they're really grouping up here. Doing an excellent job of holding back these dwarves. Great Axemen of Erebor. I love it. These Black Numenorians are so intimidating.
Catapult moving in position here. Going to try to get some good shots here. It looks like the Corsairs are going to hold their ground. They definitely need to send up more infantry to take out this position. See, yes, the uh, the guards of Osgiliath moving up. The archers still putting down suppressing fire. Good old elven support there. That's always nice to see. Here they come. They've got their pikes out ready to go. When in doubt, pike it out. They need to move up there quickly. Their troops are crumbling. They're losing hope. They need reinforcements. Oh, oh, here we go. Nice artillery shot here. Yes. Yes. No. Not even close. Someone put a ladder up here just in case to scout out the enemy. <laughs> get, you know, get some high ground. Still got some swan knights over here. Still a lot of infantry just waiting in reserve. Very wise there. Oh, yes. We got some axemen over here. Heavy axemen joining the front line. The pikes are now getting into position. He's storming up a ton of troops. This is the great push of Gondor to take out the city of Umbar. And poor Paladin Bob now. Well, he pretty much took out the Trollmen of Farad. Now he's got to take out the Tribesmen. And there goes, that sounded like the Witch King. It was probably one of the Nazgul there. I don't think the Witch King was present in this battle. He can't be everywhere. These pikes look like they're kind of glitching out here. Or at least this guy is. He's like doing a little dance there. Doing the pikeman slide. So I feel like Paladin Bob, once he breaks through here, he's going to be able to flank around the Serpent Guard. But the Serpent Guard... Are, they're losing. They, it's just too many Gondor infantry. They cannot take on so much, so or they can't take on so many, so many troops. So the Serpent Guard, they're down to 38, and they are losing a lot of troops very quick. Now 37, 36, 35. Seems like they lose a guy every second, almost. Probably every couple seconds. Yeah, the Serpent Guard are getting overwhelmed. They're gonna break any second now, and the defenses are crumbling at the great city of Umbar. There's still a lot of time left in this battle. The Black Numenorians, they're still going strong. I mean, these guys probably have a ridiculous amount of kills. And they are they are stopping the dwarves, which is insane. They've stopped two units of Swan Knights, and they've stopped two units of Iron Guard and Axemen of Erebor. That's insane. That is just insane. These guys must have a lot of chevrons, a lot of experience, because they are just wiping out these attackers. All right, let's see what's going on over here. I think it's finally this battle is slowly shifting. we got some Southron archers who have used up all their ammo trying to take out these Axemen and the uh, the guards of Osgiliath, the pikemen there. Oh, and the catapult coming in. Actually getting a ridiculous shot there, not getting any friendly fire. That is really risky to use their catapult in this type of situation where you outnumber the enemy. I hope he doesn't fire a, another shot like that again because that could have been disaster. I mean, he could have wiped out this entire force right here. I've seen it many times before. You guys have seen it many times before where catapult has uh, gotten a lot of friendly fire and just turned the battle around. Oh, oh. You're using brute force, just pure brute force to break through this defense. Paladin Bob still taking on the tribesmen over here. I cannot believe it. I can't believe this javelin unit is holding back so many forces. Oh, and the general now slowing down the masses over here. The Serpent Guard, like we saw earlier, they were getting surrounded. They finally were cut down. And now the general holding back a large amount of Gondorian infantry. And they're getting cut down pretty quickly. So that's going to be it for one of the generals who were defending Umbar. 
Oh, yep, there he goes. There he goes. Kill. It looks like he was killed by a Gondor infantry swordsman there. The dwarves are getting cut down, though. We have uh, some Haradrim archers who I assume have used up all their ammo. Oh, and now Gondor pushing through, still firing his catapult in this general direction. Why in the world would he do that? I'm not really sure, but the elves, they're going to take the opportunity to sneak by the defenses and try to get behind enemy forces. There goes the Nazgul. He's freaking out. And the Black Numenorians now holding this side. They're just holding up. This is like, uh, this is like when a dam starts to slowly break through, or the water slowly, slowly breaks through the dam, and you're just plugging your fingers, trying to contain the water, but it's just getting way out of control. And uh, that was a horrible me metaphor, but whatever. <laughs> whatever. Black Numenorean's gonna be able to cut down these elves. But will it be enough? Oh, and we got the Swan Knights who did a vicious cav charge. We missed it, but it was an excellent cav charge into the Haradrim archers. And these archers do not stand a chance. The infantry's right behind, ready to support them. Look at that. They're going to storm in here. Arrows flying everywhere. This is why I love Medieval 2 Siege Battles, because they're just so epic. They're so grindy, so epic. So much stuff going on at one time. And the men are cheering. You can hear them cheering as they take the town center of Umbar. And the Black Numenorians, they, j they just can't hold. They ca they've, they've fought for so long. They took out so many elite forces. They took so many lives. But uh, soon they their lives will be destroyed from the dwarves and the Gondor infantry. And the Rohirrim now saving the day, getting behind these guys. And just all, just the dam has been destroyed. Water is flowing freely and there's nothing they can do about it. This siege is now coming to a close, and it looks like Gondor has plenty of forces to take him out. Yep, Rohan just moving back and forth like a pinball machine, bouncing off all the enemy forces. But I am amazed that they are holding for so long. Of course, they get the infinite morale from the town center. Gondor pushing. Wow, these black Numenorians. It's insane. It's unfortunate that we're not going to be able to see the amount of kills. Uh, Son of Imladris, if you remember this battle, how many kills... Did your Black New Black Numenorians get? I mean, not only did they get a lot of kills, but they were elite units that they killed. So those are some quality kills as well. Here comes Gondor pushing up their catapult crew. It looks like they're pretty low on troops on this side, so they're kind of just sending whatever they got to break through these Black Numenorians. I mean, the two units of Black Numenorians holding over here, just they, they destroyed an entire army, it seems like. Now uh, we have one of the Nazgul running around, one of the nine trying to save the day. They're actually, it looks like they're actually kind of gaining, regaining control of the situation here. But it won't be for long. It won't be for long because uh, the floodgates will open up once again. Got some Blackroot Vale archers. I mean, look at what's left of Gondor. They still have troops back here streaming in, running through the streets. Heavy Axemen breaking through the Corsairs. Men screaming. At this point, it's you can tell it's the end of the battle. Soldiers are being very conservative. They don't want to die when they know victory is right around the corner. They want it, they want to celebrate victory. They want to have a big feast. Extra turkey legs for everyone. And women. The general trying to hold back this uh, massive horde of Gondorian infantry. The king, the king of Gondor is now present in this epic push. And uh, 
Yeah, that's going to be it, guys. That is going to be it for the defending forces. Uh, the Black Numenorians, though, they're still holding. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing how long they're holding. They're actually, they're going to win here. They're going to win. They're going to destroy the Iron Guard. I think they're falling back some of their forces here, though. Try to support other parts of the battle. So, yeah, they are falling. So, they're not retreating. They're just going to fight at a different location. That's that's insane. That's, I mean, that's that's got to be one of the most frustrating things. Oh, Heavy Axeman breaking through. Heavy Axeman breaking through alert. Oh, this entire force is breaking through. The entire force. And the, let's see, percentage kill 83% to 97%. So it's still very close. But the defenders just did not have enough to take on all of these el elite Gondorian armies. And to be fair, histor historically speaking, it should be pretty largely in favor of Gondor because uh, Umbar was not well prepared for the sneak, atta sneak attack. There we go. Now they're surrounding the general. All the forces are surrounding the general. And we'll go ahead and just fast forward towards the end results here because it's pretty obvious who's going to win this one. So yeah, they're, they're going to take this pretty quickly. So they've taken control of the town center. The general, the Nazgul, is all by himself. Let's go ahead and watch him. Oh, there he goes. Dead. Some Citadel guard take out the Nazgul. And uh, they do take the city. Just like that. Excellent. Excellent battle here, guys. Really enjoy it. I mean, everything was like... The fighting was constantly steady. Like, there was fighting almost all the time. And then just an explosion of a battle towards the very last few minutes to take this town center. Gondor was so patient and slowly chipped away at the defenders that when they felt like the dam was weak, they just flooded in all this, all the troops and broke down that dam. I'm going to keep using that analogy, that metaphor, so deal with it. And uh, the Black Numenorians here finally getting cut down. They're down to two men over here, bravely fighting, so excellent job by them. I mean, I'm sure they racked up a ton of kills in this situation. There we go. They're down. They are dead. They are down. And that is good. Well, they still got some Black Numenorians over here. That's insane. That is insane. Uh, but I'm pretty sure they're going to kill them up here pretty, pretty quick. And uh, we did it, guys. We got through the replay without any crashing. And the watch, it just crashes right at the end. I would just, I would cry. I'd cry and I would quit YouTube. Done. There's the men cheering. That's going to wrap it up here today. Pretty good defense here. Really, I mean, you got to get more kills than this. You just, it's just not enough here. Uh, only getting about 4,600 total. And the attackers doing a pretty good job, especially this player right here. I don't know who it is, but uh, he got close to 2,000 kills, which is really impressive considering that one of the defenders only got 2,000 kills. So... That's usually the defenders get a lot more kills than the uh, the attackers, but we can see the uh, the kills here I'll just quickly uh, go through here. You guys can pause it if you want to see what the uh, what each unit got here uh, But uh, yeah, that that's gonna conclude today's historic battle lore friendly siege battle the siege of Umbar and Gondor will continue to hold this uh, This great fortress for quite some time. I think about uh, over a hundred years, so yeah, thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this one, be sure to leave a like, a comment, share, and of course, subscribe if you want to see more epic battles. Big thank you to Paladin and Bob for the custom scenario and all the players who played in this one. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.